All right. Evening, everybody. RPM with you here. Trader Spotlight Live Product Showcase. Thursday, January 19th, 2012. It's right here at 9 o'clock Eastern. Tonight's show, Michael McDonald and his Eye in the Sky Trade Planning Platform System. Uh, some people might know it as the Eye in the Sky Screener from back when he first started. And uh, we're going to get Michael on here in just a second. Um, I would like to point out that you guys in the DayTradingRadio.com premium chat room are welcome to send in questions and comments. You can either private message me, I'm RPM. You can find me up at the top right hand corner uh, in a private message there. And I can read those questions to Michael. Um, what I want to do is try to let him do his demonstration first. Maybe for the first, uh, uh, first uh, 30, 45 minutes or so. And, um, and then we'll try to take those questions uh, from you guys. You can also email me too if you'd like. You can send an email to rpm at rpmws.com. That's rpm at rpmws.com. And we're going to go ahead and get this thing started here. I've got Michael's uh, screen up here. And we're going to zoom in on this so we can uh, screen share with him and show you guys what he's demonstrating to us and I'm gonna get him on the Skype here let's give him a call hey RPM hey Michael how you doing man good how are you a little bit under the weather but I'm gonna let you do most of the talking hopefully tonight if that's all right with you absolutely uh, sorry to hear about that it happens man whole family sick but I get through it. Oh man. Yeah. So how how have you been? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Been doing a lot of work to the software. Yeah, I'm anxious really um to uh to see, you know, the changes if any that you've made, you know, since the last time. I guess it's been a couple of months since we yeah. had, had you on last and um um uh, why don't we just start out, you go ahead and uh, just tell us about yourself and and tell us about the product and um and then we'll go from there. Okay, uh, I'm a, I've been a software developer for 20 plus years in, uh, as a profession and about three years ago I started trading full time and when I decided to trade full time I felt uh, I could hear you blowing your nose. <laughs> anyway, uh, when, when I started trading uh, full time I, I saw a need there to make things a little more efficient to find trades and, and research those trades to, to perform my due diligence. And being a, a software engineer, I figured I'd pull something together myself and, uh, and go from there. Because I was doing the same thing that just about everybody else does, is go to, to these sites and use their screeners. And I'd have to cross-reference them sometimes. If I found a trade on one site that looks good, then I'd have to go check it out on another site. And then I'd have to go research the financials. I mean, I'm mostly a, a trend trader, so there's not too much in the financials other than making sure they're not going out of business next week. Um, but I, I like to perform a little bit of due diligence while, before I enter a trade. So I decided to make this tool, which is basically the Swiss army knife of uh, stock screeners. It's uh, not only a screener, but it also allows you to do your research in it, and it also allows you to plan your trades. So it, it kind of takes the whole life cycle of finding a trade and planning it all out and encompasses all of that in one spot so you don't have to have an Excel spreadsheet to plan where you're getting in where you're getting out, how much are you going to make separately from when you're finding the stock itself. So I'll get started with the demo. The first thing I want to show is this, uh, well, is that okay? Are we, are we good on the? Yeah, we're good. I need to learn how to mute the, micro, mute the microphone before <laughs> I blow my nose. I tried to do that. I'm no sorry worries. about that, man. <laughs> this no will go words. down in history with something funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Yeah, no, this All is right. great, man. I'm I'm interested and uh, definitely uh, glued to the screen here. Go ahead. All right, cool. So the first thing that you're probably going to see prominently displayed on the screen right now is the web browser on the bottom right corner where you see Finviz displayed right now. And it's not just Finviz. You can actually display any website. Uh, for any stock ticker, you click on, on the left side of the screen, you see a list of stock tickers. 
and as you click those tickers it's going to bring up the web page for you in Finviz but you can actually put any web page in there that you want so like Google financials if you want to take a look at the financials for the company you can go ahead and take a look at that in that window and just flip with the uh, one click of the mouse to switch between the different uh, different types of sites like you've got MSN Stock Scouter the street rating Let me just waiting on the the computer seems to be running really slow because of uh, it looks like it's running really slow because of the um, the it's, Skype might be the Skype in the Team Viewer yeah yeah but uh, basically you can add any website you want this is a full blown browser down to there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Google real quick and show you how to add a add a web page to that. So like let's say that you like to use Yahoo Finance and we'll go ahead and grab the stock ticker that we're on right now on the left side. And let's say that we you like to look at the key statistics page for a stock when you're making a decision. And I'll get back to the screener. I'm just kind of doing this to show you how easy it is to add your own uh your own my web pages is what it's called. Your own pages to that list, so you can bring up whatever you like to uh, do your research with. Just waiting for it to load here. Here we go, and we'll go down here, and we'll go down to the uh, ski key statistics page. That's a nice page. And what we do is we just copy the web address up here, right click on the my web pages, give it a name. I'll just call it Yahoo Finance Key Statistics and then paste in that web address and hit save and now whenever you click on a ticker in the list it's going to bring up that key statistics page for any web any ticker that you've clicked on so that's how that my web pages feature is uh... is works and it's pretty useful because you don't have to go in and type ticker symbols on all these different websites to do your research you have it all in one place and it's real quick to get between websites so that's that's the research feature called my web page. Now let me get into the uh, actual screening portion of the software, which is extremely powerful because it's not only one screener; it's it's like taking Finviz, Google Finance, Yahoo Finance, Briefings.com, all these different sites, and smashing it into one screener so that you can actually combine the criteria from all those different locations. Plus, you've got your technical indicators to combine with that to get your results. So you can really fine-tune what you're looking for. It actually even includes financials. So you can, you can choose trending financials. Let me just kind of show you some of these things. Let's start with patterns. Um, if you wanted to screen for stocks that are in a downward trending pattern looking for a bottom reversal, you can grab the screen and drag it by this uh, thick bar in the middle. And if we just grab downward trending patterns and bottom reversal patterns you'll see what I mean here and I'm just holding my uh, control key down on my keyboard to allow me to select multiple items from that list it's taken the list which is almost 7,000 stocks and brought it down to uh, 2,000 stocks that are in a downward trending an overall downward trending pattern now you can go over to the st stochastics and look for an oversold situation and it's narrowed that down to 300 items then you can give a daily minimum volume let's say a million shares each day and a price range so let's say we want stocks between five dollars and thirty dollars now we're down to 35 stocks and that's a very manageable focus list to go look through uh, we can definitely we're gonna go farther into all the different criteria that's available that's just a real quick uh, display of how quick you can take a, a list of 7,000 stocks and get down to around 35 that you can really quick look through the patterns and do your research real quick on and see if you want to go into a, a trade on them. And now once you've got all that screening criteria up there, you simply have to click at the items in the list to bring up the different uh, stock charts with the patterns on them to see where they're at in the patterns. And you can use your up and down arrow key on your keyboard to go through that list so you don't even have to click on them with your mouse you can really quick look at the different charts so let's go a little farther into uh... what criteria i have here you've got moving averages you have got simple and exponential twenty fifty and two hundred and you can look for crossovers between those different moving averages you've got bollinger bands of uh, dates such as earnings report or ex-dividend date and this is the number of days 
uh, until the next earnings report is released and the ex-dividend date is how far back the ex-dividend date was announced. Insider trading. Now this is nice because you're not going to see this combined with these other things anywhere else. You can actually filter on types of transactions that are going on by the insider. So if you were looking for stocks that had some buy transactions and it's filtered that list of 30 down to 13 and we can look down at the bottom at insider trading and it shows you the different insider trading that's going on there but you can say within the last five days and you can give it a minimum value let's clear the other filter criteria that we had because we had pretty specific criteria already when we were down to a uh, small number of stocks but I'm just going to clear that real quick go back to insider trading buy within the last five days and we can give a minimum value so let's say we want at least five hundred thousand dollars so now we're seeing that the stocks that have a transaction within the last five days with an insider buy of at least five hundred thousand dollars and then you can go to your web browser and look at the different charts and uh... or the financials whatever you want to look at in there so this insider trading can be combined with any other criteria which is kind of nice you also have insider ownership or institutional ownership percentage you can give a range there you have stock buyback programs that you can specify within the last so many number of days and the number of shares it represents or the total value it represents and you can actually customize these list boxes that have values in them if you right click on them and choose change values you can actually put in your own values there so if you want to go back 10 days you can simply put in 10 there and hit save and once you hit save there all your custom values are in there and you can even remove values that you don't use so let's say you, you just want uh, one, three, five, and ten. You can delete the other values, hit save, and you have just those values. This applies to any box on the top at all, like minimum daily volume. If you like 250, or if you like 2 million in there, you can just put 2 million in this box, and you can use that as a criteria from that point forward. So you can customize all these boxes to your, your uh, usage. Highs and lows, both from the 52 week and the 50 day. You've got fundamentals, some ratios and quarter over quarter growth. The ratings, if you like to trade based on analyst opinions, uh, let me clear the filters and go back into this one. Uh, you can look for an uh, opinion that was given within this last number of X number of days, like five days. You can choose the type of opinion that was given or by which analyst or firm. You also have MSN Stock Scouter here. So let's say you like stocks which are between the 8 and 10 range on MSN. You can combine that with the street rating. So let's say that you like to see them with at least a buy rating from the street. And these 14 stocks have both an MSN of 8 or higher and a buy rating from the street. This My Ratings is actually a personalized rating system based on rules you define. Um, it's basically you define your personal trading style and it calculates this my rating and quantifies how closely each stock matches your trading style and you can actually filter on that and I'll talk a little more about that my rating once we get to the dashboard now, Michael I have a question for you sure when you're doing these filters and you're adjusting these different criteria at the top the actual results are over on the left correct correct down at the bottom and over on the left okay it gives you a, rec a record count here as to how many stocks you have as a result of that. And those are the ones here on the left in the list? Correct. And okay. it'll show you the actual number of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I want to point out, too, for you guys watching tonight, um, if, you'd, if you'd like, if it's a little bit hard to read because um, I've got him on uh, full screen here. If you just hover over the day trading radio uh, video and click on full, it'll give you full screen shot. And I believe you'll be able to see all the the details a lot a lot better so just a little tip for you guys all right go ahead michael thanks oh sure no problem uh, i'm just going to go over the last few tabs that have the standard information and then there's a very powerful tab called custom that has every single criteria in the software uh... in there but let me just show you these other few tabs you've got country so you can filter by what country a, a company is based in you've got sector and industry so you can filter by sector and industry and i, I know a lot of people trade etfs and so you can actually go into financials and choose exchange traded funds. Let me just clear out the other filter criteria. Sometimes you get a little too fine a filter and it, it 
filters everything out. But if you just want to see the exchange traded funds, you could set that filter criteria. And then gains and losses, the software actually allows you to import your gains and losses. And you can display them down in the bottom of the screen here. And this allows you to set a time frame to where you can display your actual realized gains and losses in the software so that you can review your performance and revisit those stocks that are making you good money. And I'll, I'll cover that a little more, but this is, that's what this uh, screen applies to. So now let's go back to this custom tab. And you can drag these tabs in any order you want. So if you use custom a lot and you use bowl bands a lot, you can actually move these tabs around and put them in order from left to right to the ones that you use most uh, just by dragging them. This uh, green button here in the custom tab brings up the filter assistant. And the filter assistant graphically shows you all the criteria in the software that you can filter on. So you've got technical indicators that you can filter on and there's quite a bit here. The, and uh, uh, Since I'm talking about technical indicators, you can actually customize these. Uh, if you go into the settings screen, let me just cancel out of there real quick, go into tool settings, go to this calculations tab, you can actually, if, if you don't use the 20, 50, and 200 simple or exponential moving average, you can actually add your own set of moving averages to customize it to a way you trade. So if you use a, a simple 10 moving average, you could actually add that to the screen and it will become available in the software as a filtering uh, criteria for you. You can change all the built-in ones like MACD, CCI, DPO. Just change the number of days or whatever parameter there to suit your needs. I'm just going to bail out of this because it's going to force a recalculation which I don't want to do right now since I'm in the middle of demonstrating it which takes a minute just to recalculate. But when we go back to the filter assistant you've got technical indicators you've got all the price opening closing high and low and what's nice about this as well as the indicators is you can actually go back to historical values um, so if you wanted to compare yesterday's uh, closing price so one day ago is greater than yesterday's opening price you can simply put in the number of days ago at the bottom of the screen here and it'll actually filter going back 30 days in history and you can take that on you can use that in technical indicators or closing price action. Uh, you can combine those in any way that you want. And there's also a percentage difference. So let's say that you wanted to see things where the prices action is squeezed. So you wanted to see where the opening was less than 1% away from the closing today or the most recent date the data was collected. You can actually put this percentage difference in there and that allows you to calculate the difference between any two numeric fields. So it's, it's very flexible in the, in the way that you can compare these fields. Plus you can go back in history and do that uh, in history. So like in Bollinger Bands, if you were looking for like a squeeze in the Bollinger Bands, you could do it that way using this percent difference box. But you can use any two fields that are numeric and do that, or volume, anything like that. Let me just go over some of these other parameters that are in here. You've got volume characteristics, even trending, so the number of days it's been in a certain direction, up or down, and the number of days it's been in that direction. Uh, the patterns, the candlestick, so if you click on that, it'll show you all the items that you could have picked from the other screen. Uh, whether there's a shorting interest in the stock, whether it's optionable, and performance information about the stock for the last week, month, quarter, six months, etc. Fundamentals is nice because you can actually um, filter on the last four annual reports. So you could compare this year's sales against last year's sales and trend it for the last four years if you wanted to build in fundamental analysis into your screening. Uh, so you can compare different the sales debt, income, total debt, and cash against each other and see how they're trending if you like to... Uh, factor and fundamentals. You've also got quarterly reports. So you've got five quarters of the most recent annual reports. Excuse me, quarterly reports. You've got ratios you can use. You've got margins, returns, growth, both EPS and sales. Ownership, which I showed you, insider, institutional. You got demographic information about the company. This is pretty much the similar to what you saw on the other screen. You've got market cap in here that wasn't on the other screen. The shares outstanding and float. Analyst opinions. 
you can actually look for trending in analyst EPS estimates. So if you are a trader who likes to look for things like the EPS estimates by the analysts were not downgraded in the last uh, 90 days, you can actually look at trending here. So if you wanted to take the current EPS estimate and make sure it's greater than or equal to, I'll take out this percentage, the, the estimate seven days ago to make sure that it wasn't downgraded, you can actually do that and make sure there's no downgrades in the EPS estimates and do that between any of those EPS estimates that you want. And this does get a little, um, you have to navigate into these trees. You can actually add the things you use most to this My Favorites area. So if you like to use the EPS estimates, you can actually just right click and choose Add to My Favorites. Give it a name. It'll default with what it's named in the list. But if you put in Current EPS Estimates, and then once you've done that, it's actually available in this list so that you don't have to navigate the tree for your favorite criteria you like to use. So I've optimized it that way. You've got revenue estimates. You've got price targets. I've added that since the last time we talked RPM. You can now screen on mean, median, high, and low analyst price targets. Someone requested that. And actually this screener wasn't just developed by me. I mean I came up with the software a year ago, but there are there are dozens of professional traders that give me their feedback on what they'd like to see in the screening and when they ask for those things I incorporate in the software very quickly so a lot of the technical indicators and a lot of the criteria has come from requests from people who have been in trading for 30 years so I mean there's a lot of experience that is, is behind the software just beyond my experience and so like that EPS trending I got that from someone who suggested it and then the price targets of course like I mentioned uh, ratings, you've got the MSN, the street, and then the personal rating out of the dashboard, which I'll talk about here in a moment. You've got your own trade planning information, and I'll show you the trade planning here in a second, but you basically plan out your trade, and you can actually filter on your trade plan if you wanted to filter on your trade planning. Risk to reward ratios, that's one that's uh, big. So you, once you put in all the information, it calculates your risk to reward ratios for you automatically. And if you're looking for a risk to reward ratio above two or three, which is a good trade, then you can actually filter on that. And then we've got view assignments of when you assigned a, a ticker to a view. And basically you can categorize all the stocks into views so that you can organize them and they're color coded. So you see the blue and the red going on here on the left. That's their membership to different views and I'll show you that in a minute here so I'll close that down the views are located in the top left and by default the system comes with four views built in you've got your portfolio of what you're holding short-term prospects that you're considering favorites that you like to rotate through and the blacklist which you can take a stock and make sure it never shows up in any of your results again so if you're a person that maybe does not trade ETFs you can mark all the ETFs as a blacklisted item and it will never show up in any of your results. Or if you've been burned on a stock and you never want to see that stock again, you can add it to the blacklist and it will disappear from all the results. I'm glad you added that feature just for me. <laughs> <laughs> but you can actually create your own views. I created one for the HPS 40 here on Day Trading Radio. I'm not going to bring that up because you know that's for members only but you can create your own custom views and add stocks to those views and when you select one of these items from the list it filters down the list on the left to the items that are just in that list so if you you've done your screening and you add all the stocks that you are interested in to the short-term prospect list then you can clear your your screener out and just have those in a permanent list somewhere where you can actually look at those without having to define the screen and look for those stocks again. They're actually added to a list and organized color coded. And when you've established a filter, you can actually save your screens in this My Filters screen uh, list. So I've got several that I've created. And when you choose them from the list, they'll load up on the right side. So it's choose my patterns and all the other criteria. And you can update those. So let's say I change my price range to 30 here. I just simply right click and choose I update criteria and say yes and from that point forward that criteria is going to load up as the price range 5 to 30. So you can create as many of these as you want and uh, 
That way you can keep all your screening organized and you can keep your results organized in these views. So that's screening in a nutshell. Did you have any questions, uh, RPM, or did you want to? No, I'm fascinated, man. It, it's better and better every time I see it. Um, <laughs> but I would like to point out to, for those in the chat room, if you guys have any questions for Michael at all, go ahead and fire them in the chat room there. There's not a whole lot going in the room tonight, but I see we do have uh, you know, a good handful of people that have joined us. Um, but you guys feel free if you have any questions whatsoever, either send me a private message or just put them right there in the room and me and Michael will try to get to you. Great. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Man. Okay, I'll just continue on here. At the bottom, you'll notice there's a bunch of tabs that have information in them. You've got the insider trading, which I showed a little earlier. You've got the analyst opinions that are specific to a stock. So every time you click on a stock in this list, it loads up the ratings or insider trading or any of these tabs for that stock. You've got stock buyback programs. You don't have a lot of them in here. Uh, let me just find one real quick. CHK. If I double click on it in this list here, and then, yeah. So, stock buyback programs aren't for every stock, of course, just the companies that decide to do a stock buyback. You've got this industry peers tab that allows you to compare a company to its peers within that industry, and you can pick out which columns you want to display. Um, so, if you right click up the top and choose column designer, You've got hundreds of columns that you can display in there so that you can use the criteria that you like to use to compare a company against among its peers. So if you just scroll through this list, you can see it's pretty endless here. And you just check the boxes you want to see as a column, and you can reorganize them, move them left or right on the screen, up and down in the screen, and it'll show up left and right. And then you can actually sort by any column in here. So if you wanted to sort by market cap, and then click a second time to sort it in the opposite direction and then you can see where Chesapeake stacks up against their peers in that industry and then you can review their performance against each other and you know I've got ratios on here but you can pick any columns that you'd like to use to compare uh, industry peers there. Uh, you've got sector industry analysis which allows you to drill down through the sector and it goes it shows you how many stocks are in each sector and then their performance you can pick out the columns in this as well so you can if you wanted to look for which uh, sectors are performing the best this this week you can descend sort this performance week column and it looks like technologies is a real winner this week and then within that you can go to the industries and sort those I'm sorry I picked the wrong column here let me pick performance by week and it looks like semiconductors doing really well. It's got a 20% gain this week. And then on this right side, you can drag this middle bar here. And these are all the companies within that industry. And you can sort by any column and pick out which columns to display in there. So you've got kind of a drill down through sector industry that allows you to look at these in a different way, kind of analyzed by sector industry. Um, you've got CNBC video it's, that can be streaming. I'm just going to turn that off because it'll start talking over us here. And we've got notifications, which when you plan out your trades, you can actually set the software up to let you know when a stock is approaching your entry or your exit points for your trade. And you enable those through the settings screen. And you choose what percentage uh, the latest closing price is from each different uh, plan item. And I'll get into that in a second in the planning screen. So those are the basic information at the bottom. I'm going to jump back up to this top of the screen and I'm going to skip over dashboard for a second and go straight to fundamentals. When you're doing your research it's nice to take a look at the financials of a company once you've got a screened list and up here you've got a color-coded screen that shows you the year to date on the left, the four most recent annual reports in the middle, and then on the right, it's got the five most recent quarterly reports. And they're color-coded, showing whether they've gone up or down, depending on what type of, like, cash is opposite from the, or excuse me, total debt's opposite from everything else because, it, you know, you want that to go down. But basically, if it's green, it's good. If it's red, it's bad. So it allows you to visually look at the numbers and see what kind of financial condition the company is in and how it's been trending just by looking at it without having to, crunch numbers. It's got all the percentage differences and stuff on there for you, but it's nice to be able to look at the screen and tell how well it's doing just by the color on the screen without having to go into too much nauseam detail. I've done this also for EPS trends. So you've got the current estimates for quarters, 
and year and the trending of it over the last 90 days. So you can see that there's been down ticks in the estimates on, on the stock that we're on, Chesapeake. And uh, so you can tell, just like the fundamentals, by the amount of green or red on the screen, whether it's trending in a negative or positive direction. I've got pivot points on here, so if you like to plan out your trades based on pivot points, you've got your different areas of support and resistance calculated for you based on the latest closing price from the last day. And this is the trade planning screen, the observations and timing. I'll get back to that, but let me go to the dashboard first to show you the last research feature before we talk about plan planning out the trade. The dashboard it works kind of like the fundamentals in EPS in that it's color-coded but you actually define all the rules on the screen so you take your trading methodology and you quantify it on the screen as rules and it'll it'll evaluate each stock you click on to show how closely it matches your set of trading rules so what you do is you go into a cell here you can double click on it and you define the uh, criteria so let's say if the price is under let me just really quick define this technical price closing is less than a dollar then you want to know about it that it's bad because you don't trade anything under a dollar and if you happen to not notice that during your screening it'd be nice to see something uh, pop up for you that gives you a visual indicator so here's an example here CHC and if you hover over this box it'll show you what the actual value is it's 99 cents so these boxes light up and they have this information box next to them where you can actually see the rules with the actual data without having to go look at columns of data it just pops up for you and this my ratings takes all of these rules that you define and you can define as many as you want you've got seven boxes with four cells in each box and you can load them up with all the rules that narrowly define your trading style and focus in on your exact criteria and this my ratings gets calculated based on each stocks uh, matching of those rules you've got three categories of rules you've got a pro a warning and an error the pro is good of course and that gives it a possible five points positive for a stock the warning is less severe than an error it's just something you'd like a heads up on but it you're not gonna avoid the trade you just kinda wanna know about it so that could take the my rating down a possible one point for all of the combination of all the warnings you have and then error of course you really want to know about it and you want the my rating to be lower so that can subtract up to four points from the my rating so that's how the my rating gets calculated it just quantifies all these rules combines all of them and calculates that my rating so let me just cancel out of that so that's dashboard. It's it's I think it's a really cool feature because just by the colors up there you can really tell how stocks match your criteria. They light up green, red, and yellow. And yellow if it's a warning would be the color if it lit up on here. So that's dashboard. And then you can actually filter on that my rating. So, go ahead, RPM. I was going to uh tell you we got a couple of questions in the chat room. Sure. Um, they're um is there a, a screen for uh, sector rotation, um, like the IBD and the, or the Morningstar uh, sectors? And the other question was, is there earnings calendar somewhere? Um, there are no sector rotation features in the software. I mean, you can look at the sector and industry and the performance numbers here, but there's not really a rotation type um, section to the software. But the earnings calendar, you can look for earnings up here in this this message is flashing at the top is what's called a rapid fire ticker tape mm -hmm. and it can give you a heads up of earnings reports that are coming out and you can configure how many days in advance to notify you so um, you can also filter on earnings dates so if you wanted to look for stocks that are I'm just clearing out the filter criteria so we can use that exclusively the next earnings report in the next two days and it didn't take there we go those are the 74 stocks that will report or earnings in the next two days. So you can actually, you don't have to look at a schedule for earnings report, but I guess in a roundabout way it does have an earnings schedule because you can put in the number of days in advance and it'll give you all the stocks that are coming up. And you can actually add the next earnings date to this grid on the left. So let me do that real quick to show you. And you can see what dates they're coming up. So let's see. 
next earnings date. Add that to my grid here. I can I can uh, expand this left side to show the data, and this is the earnings dates that are reported for those stocks. And you can sort it by an earnings date. So here's the things that reported today, and here are the things that are going to report tomorrow. So yeah, you can actually have an earnings calendar based on those two features. Nice. So are there any other questions? Uh, we had um, we had one from Hit and Run. He was concerned about pricing, or just question about pricing on it. Um, but I, I thought maybe we'd save that for last. If you... sure, whichever. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's two ninety nine regularly, but I'm offering the day trading radio members a fifty dollar discount. So it's two forty nine with your day trading membership. And there's a special. Uh, a special link that RPM is going to provide for you to go to a special payment page to get that $50 discount. Yeah. And I, I guess he'll put that in the chat room for you. Yeah, the bot will, will pull that up as well. Yeah, so if you go and browse the website, just make sure you go back to that payment page to pay because that has the special discount price on it. So you can go look at the features and watch the videos and all that stuff, but just make sure you go back to that page to actually do the payment. And you actually get 30 days to try out the software for free. And so you don't have to buy it tonight. I'm not trying to sell it to anybody tonight. Uh, you can try it out for 30 days, and it's the full version of the software. You get all the data, all the screening, and it's not limited in any way other than the 30 days and then after 30 days if it's not making you money and making your life easier then you can just uninstall it you know no worries no hassle I don't require an email address for that or a credit card or anything you just download it install it and run it you know what would be a really cool feature with this thing uh, it's lifetime hit and run it's lifetime right Michael yes one payment covers you for life and you get all the upgrades to the software they're included and it's continually being upgraded as recommendations or requests come in from professional traders for new features and I'm adding them weekly mm -hmm. and you use this for yourself so it's not like you're not going to maintain the product I mean you're doing you're maintaining the product for yourself correct <laughs> so, you know. correct I, I built it for me I use it every day um, you know what would be really cool and this is something you might want to think about is some type of distributed idea network to where, you know, people, um, you know, find just the perfect settings and the perfect cri filter criteria and the perfect screen set screener settings. And it, and it works good for them, you know, and if they were to share those, those ideas, you know, with the others, um, you know, like, sort of like, like with thinkorswim, you know, how have, you have different people, uh, come up with, um, uh, different, you know, types of um, indicators, and they, and they wind up making their way into like the Thinkorswim platform, for example. You know, that type of thing. It looks like you're showing your forum here. Yeah, actually, in the forum, I anybody can go in here and post their favorite screens. I asked uh, users whether they were interested in social networking type features in the product, and I got a a pretty resounding no. They really didn't want to share things openly. Yeah. Uh, with everybody but some people are really nice about their settings and they share them in this forum and you got like I don't know about 25 30 different ideas in here but this forum is a great place for people to share ideas with their screens and also their my web pages and their dashboard settings mm -hmm. and somebody it looks like somebody in the room asked if they could install it on both a laptop and a desktop as long as it's you and you're the one using it I don't mind if you put it on your home computer and your work computer or your laptop uh, the license is for you, and it, it applies to all the computers you use personally. So it, you don't have to pay extra to put it on two machines. Uh, new to trading, they're asking, do you get a trial period? So you're going to give them, uh, for 30 days, it's un, un, unlimited, no, none of the features are turned off. They get to use it just like it would be if it was if there was a paid license, and they got 30 days to, to try it out, right? That's correct. Um, there's one from TC1000 there. He assumes it uh, compares indices. Uh, can you follow foreign market indices as well? Any plans to sp uh, span to the futures in Forex? Um, actually, I don't plan to. I, I only do equities, and really the, the most of the information I gather is available freely for the equities and uh, against the Amex, the NASDAQ, and the NYSE. And so those are the three... Uh, the three exchanges I cover in the software. 
and I, I don't plan to uh, expand it out to other fo like the the Tokyo Stock Exchange or anything like that just because the data is harder to gather mm -hmm. so it's kind of like uh, getting the information having complete information is more important to me than having more stocks that have big holes in the data right. that's not helpful to anyone right you've really put a lot of work into this thing I mean I could tell I mean it, it it's well thought out I mean it it really is. Um, um, well, I, I just took it from the perspective of a trader because I trade every day. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, what are the tools that I need to do my job other than actual perform the trades? <laughs> right. Now, the the performance tracker thing in there is basically like a built-in portfolio where you can put, put your trades in there and you can track what's going on. With it. Yes. Yeah. That's something I don't believe you had that the last time. Uh, the gains and losses I've had, oh, okay. and I'll just show that real quick. You can import all your gains and losses uh, from your brokerage, and if your brokerage is not in the current list to import from, all you got to do is shoot me an email, and I'll build an interface for it. So you can bring them. You'll you'll basically download a file from your brokerage that's in a text format, and it'll bring in uh, that information for you automatically so you don't have to enter it. You do have the option if you wanted to enter it, you can enter it, but I've created import formats for a lot of the major brokerages and as new ones come up I add them as all inclusive from the the fee that you already pay, you don't have to pay extra for that. And this gains and losses screen is actually pretty nice to review your performance because you can aggregate things. So if you wanted to see by week what you were making on individual stocks or overall so like these are the different uh, weeks you can actually summarize them and if you want to go by year you can see what you've brought in for each time period and see the breakout of that so it's really nice to slice and dice your realized gains and I think it's better than I've seen on any brokerage site because you'd have to actually take all this data and throw it into a spreadsheet to be able to summarize it in this way so like by month it shows you roll up by month what your gains and losses and your net are. So I mean it's I think it's really nice way to see your trades and if you there's something that you're trading a lot you can actually double click the item in this gains and losses screen and it'll take you to that in the list on the left so you can go take a look at the chart and see where that stock is trending right now and whether or not you want to get back into it and I've I've been having a ball with Cisco for the last week I mean it's been off the charts and uh, I just leveraged it and, and made some good money on, on Cisco. But, I mean, a lot of us rotate through stocks that we're familiar with. Yeah. And that gains and losses screen allows you to identify what are your best performers and uh, avoid the ones that aren't so good. Uh, there's one from Jacob. Wants to know if you've got Lightspeed integrated to where you can import Lightspeed uh, trades. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to go into the settings here. Import. I have... Lightspeed already. I have E-Trade, Interactive Brokers, Lightspeed, TD, Ameritrade, Thinkorswim, Trade King, and Zecco. So, yeah, I do have Lightspeed. So most of these brokers, I guess, it's just like a CSV file or something similar, and you just figure out the fields and everything so they, they match up and everything. Is that basically what you're doing? Correct. It's either an XML or a comma separated, and it has to have some basic information in it, you know, enough information for me to build out the screen, mm -hmm. like what date you went into the trade, what date did you get out of the trade, your, your purchase price and your sales price and the number of shares, and I can calculate everything else from that, and I can back into it. I mean, if it has the gain or the loss and, you know, it doesn't have one of the price fields, I can back into that by the shares and stuff. So, I mean, I'm real flexible on that. Yeah, there's Roma Dog asking um, about MB trading. Uh, do you have uh, MB trading uh, in that list? I I don't think I have MB trading, but it's you know for me to add something to this list takes me literally about two to four hours, and it's not a big deal. You just send me a sample file, and I take that file and I create an interface for it and add it to this list, and bam, you're good to go. Nice. So I've made that integration nice and easy. Uh, the, let me talk about the trade planning part of it. Uh, I think that might be helpful. Cool. Um, so I'm going to bring up one of my screens here and downward trading patterns and it looks like guess might it's had a double bottom here and it's, it's up close to the downward trending 
uh, support or excuse me resistance line so this is something to keep an eye on maybe in the next few days and decide whether or not you want to take that trade but let's just uh, pretend here that we're going to take this trade and go over to the observation and timing screen and I'll show you how it calculates the risk to reward ratios for you let's say that we've looked at this and we've checked out all the fundamentals or however you like to do your due diligence before you enter a trade and you decide that if this goes over uh, 2987 that you'll enter a trade and the shares can be calculated for you you can either manually enter the number of shares you want to buy or in the settings screen uh, you can go into this defaults and there's three ways it can calculate it for you you can always use the same number of shares all the time so if you always buy a hundred shares you can set it to enter a hundred for you every time after you enter the entry price or you could say the maximum market value of your trade. So 10,000 is what I had in there. So it calculated the number of shares to get me a $10,000 uh, position in that stock. And then you have max potential loss. And that, after you enter the stop point and the entry price, it figures out if you said you're only willing to lose uh, $100 on the trade, it'll backfill the shares to give you that type of risk management in there. That was something that somebody asked for. But let's say number of shares, let's say you always want to use 100. I'll just put that in real quick. Hit save. And if I clear these things out again, let's see, I was in, because I went in the settings screen, it cleared out my screen here. Let me just go back to that stock. Oops. And let's just clear these fields real quick. And if I put 29.87, now that my settings set to that, it'll put the 100 shares in for me and then I could put in my stop loss point so let's say if it goes below 29.64 excuse me 20, 29.64 and let's say my first target for this is uh, 31.99 and let's say our second target is just below that horizontal uh, resistance there 33.99 it's calculated your risk to reward ratios for you plus your potential loss and gains based on the numbers you've entered so you could potentially lose thirty three bucks here you could earn two hundred and two if things go well and four hundred dollars if it hits your second price objective so that's how the risk to reward ratios get calculated automatically for you and all you had to enter was your entry price the number of shares your stop and your targets and everything else is calculated for you and I used to use a spreadsheet to do all this stuff to just kind of make sure I was making a good decision when I get into a trade. And of course, when you've got a spreadsheet to go into and all that, it's just kind of a pain. Plus, getting t uh, to filter on high risk to reward ratios, that's built into the software. So you can actually filter your trades after you've planned them all out and focus on the highest risk to reward ratios based on your, en your own entry and exit points. So... I mean, it's very nice to actually prioritize your trading for the next day once you've planned out the trades in your focus list. So I think it's a nice feature. So that's the observation and timing screen. You can also put in observations about what direction the trend's going in if you want to keep some notes. And just general observations, this is a free form box and if you hit control D, it'll put in the date and time for you. And then you can type in the notes that you have for that stock and all of these screens are detachable so if you have a multi monitor system and you've got five or six screens you can actually right click and choose detach and pin let me just go back to this here you can pin that screen to any monitor that you want so you can move them around it'll remember the positions for you and uh... like the web browser if you want the web browser detached and off to your monitor on the left and you don't want to take the screen space <clears throat> on your main monitor for that you can maximize the browser on whatever screen that you have and as you cycle through the list of stocks it'll refresh this browser to whatever stock you're on and whatever my web page you have selected so it's it's geared towards a multi monitor system to maximize the space that you can use for these different screens and these tabs you can actually drag them around and change the order of them. If you don't like the order that these tabs appear in when you install the software, you can reorganize them to suit your your style and how you like to see things. So it's it's very. I try to make it very flexible and customizable. Um, one of the questions is our monthly fee. 
No, there is no monthly fee. Once you pay the lifetime license, you own the software for life. And that includes all the data, all the upgrades. There's no recurring fees of any kind. And it does cost you money to actually host the data because I know we're, I'm helping you with that. And um, so that's something you actually provide every month. Um, every, I guess every day there's new data that gets imported for everybody's machine, right? Everybody's Correct. Yep. At the, at the end of a market day, there's a data collection server that runs and gathers all this information for you. And it, once it's finished collecting the data, it, it beams out to all of the machines out there. And you have the latest market uh, data about two hours after market close. It takes about that much time to collect the data and once it becomes available. And there, Woody, the first asking about the ads. Those ads are simply because he's got Finviz as in the actual browser there. Um, so it, it's, he's using Finviz as a d display mechanism for, for that particular chart and whatnot. And the ads are part of that Finviz. So he's got several different uh, choices there. Yahoo Finance. What was the other one that you had? Free stock charts. Um, yeah. You know, you're not getting anything from the ads. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not promoting any ads. Mm -hmm. That's just the websites themselves. Right. And if you, uh, this uses Internet Explorer embedded in there, and you may be able to configure Internet Explorer to block the ads if it really bugs you. But I know it takes space on the screen the way that they have some of these web pages laid out, and that's why I created this button on the right, the blue arrow that points up on the right side. If you click that, it actually maximizes the web browser section so that you can take advantage of all that space depending on the size of your monitor. If you have a 42-inch monitor, you might not have to worry about that. But um, And then if you click it again, it restores the top portion of the screen so you can see that. So you can toggle back and forth and kind of maximize that as well as detach this browser screen and throw it on another monitor and have it maximized mm -hmm. and, and so you can take up the whole screen. I think the beauty behind this is that you really, you know, went – went so far as that you're, you're actually out there, you're grabbing data that's auto, already publicly available data, but where your skill came in is defining it and, and then sorting it and using it all in one piece of software to, you know, to search through it, to use, you know, all the different, you know, I, that's the cool thing about it. You know, how you assembled all the data in one spot, you know, and I think that's where the true value is. And also the ability, you know, to, to, to quickly and easily, uh, you know, do these settings and everything, and and then and all you're really doing is just displaying. Um, you know, on the, you're using these websites to actually display that you know the lookup on a particular stock. Um, you know, just like you know, individual would do that. You know, on their own, just using their regular web browser. This just makes it convenient, all in one location. I think that's really nice. Uh, Definitely, and and the screening you can't get like you can go to these different screeners and do separate screens and then cross-reference those lists if you wanted to. But that takes a lot of time, and that's kind of why I built it. I mean, yeah. to bring all the data in one place and have that as your screener, and you can cross-reference the MSN Stock Scouter ratings against the street ratings, you know, and add all this other criteria. I mean, it's just, it's nice. Can you um, detach something for us, please? As Woody the First is asking if you can do that. Absolutely. And let me just toggle back to that. And then you just drag this off to whatever whatever screen you want that on. I mean, right. off to another. I have a two-monitor system. I drag it off to my other screen, and I can maximize that and put it anywhere you want. You can detach any tab in here except for, like, things that didn't make sense, like the data collection. You really don't want to see that all the time, so it doesn't matter. Right. And your importing and exporting really didn't make any sense either, so I, I didn't make those detachable. Um, I left those in place. But the one section I haven't covered is the help videos. Okay. I, may, I, I tried to uh, make it easy to learn how to use the software, so I started making instructional videos on the different topics inside of the software. And you can watch any of these videos simply by clicking on them. And they're categorized on the left here by topic. And there are hundreds of videos in here to, to show you how to learn the software. And you just click on one, it'll actually bring up your browser and start showing you the educational video in an external browser. So you can actually watch it in your browser on another screen and then follow along in the software. And so I'll, I'll 
turn that off so we don't hear it talking over us. But it actually goes step by step through the software to show you how to use each feature. I've documented every single feature in the software this way so that you can uh, you can follow along and learn that way. And there's several different educational resources I put together. We've got this educational video series, and in the help menu, I've also created a quick start guide that gives you the basics of the software to get you up and running without having to go through the nauseam of all the videos and all, all the user guide. And basically it's categorized in a way that a trader would approach it. You want to build your focus list first, then you will organize the stocks you find into views that you're interested in, doing your research real quick, and then the dashboard, you know, and it goes through all the other information, the trade planning. So, I mean, this is a very quick resource to get up and running in the software. It's about uh, 30 pages long, but it's the optimized route to get up and running with the software quickly. Nice. Um, level 2 and Level 3 info, um, you, you're not offering it. There's no way. You, you, there's none of that in there, is there? Any level no, two I don't have. Yeah. No. Yeah. And then we've got the user guide, which goes into nauseam detail about every single feature in the software. And this, this document is about... Uh, I think it's about 100 pages long. So it, it shows you every single screen, every single button, and shows you how to, how to use every single feature of the software. So if, if uh, you really want to get into it and really learn how to use the software and every single feature of it, it's all documented in the user guide. Yeah, this thing is really thorough, man. You, you've really done a nice job. I mean, even the documentation and everything, I, I didn't even seen that before. Um, looks nice, man. Um, and you got some good feedback in the chat room too. Some people have been using it, so uh, good oh, to yeah. see them cool. supporting you. Right on. Uh, there's one more thing that I've added to it. I added a data administration tool for uh, if you think your database might be corrupt or something. I add an external tool that's in the Eye in the Sky uh, trade planning folder that goes on your start menu and allows you to do things like check the integrity of your database that stores all the information repair the database if that's necessary say you had a a problem with your hard drive or something like that this will actually go through and attempt to repair your database if there was some data loss and uh... as well as uninstalling sql server and putting it back on and uh... just gives you a, a, a administrative features against the database side that are kind of outside of the scope of the software but they're nice tools to have so that you don't have to know about sql server to be able to deal with problems mm -hmm. So I've added that to the, to the. Uh, now this is a arsenal. Windows. This is a Windows only product, right? Um, it will run on a Mac as long as you're running a virtual machine on it. You can yeah. run uh, Parallels or Fusion, and it works great. I've got several customers running uh, Parallels and Fusion, and uh, you just have to install an old version of Windows. I recommend Vista, and you can find those on like eBay uh, for cheap. And then just put parallels on there with a Windows Vista, and then just do the setup as normal. And right. then you can run it within, within Mac without having to do a boot camp or anything like that to be totally in Windows. Right, but it's a Windows product. I mean, it, we're still Correct. using Windows. If you do it the other way, you're still technically using Windows. Um, That's correct. Seeing it in in Java or seeing it completely web based would be nice one day. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get around to that. I mean, I'm using it, and I'm pretty heavy into the market, so a full rewrite is probably out of the question for yeah, now. Yeah, great job, man. Um, that, that's a full hour, unless you got something else that you wanted to point out. Oh no, I'm good. I just wanted to show them the website, so if they want or interested in learning more, okay. I'll bring that up so they can see that. And I'll go ahead and put that special link in the chat room again for those that would would like to get that fifty dollar discount. Okay. So, and there it is if, right there. Yeah, and if, if you're interested in checking out the 30 day trial just to see if it's right for you, you just go to the website, which is iintheskyscreener.com. Go to the download link in the top bar, and then you select which operating system you're using from the list on the left side, whether it be 7, Vista, or XP, and then it'll start downloading the uh, software for you. Now, is this thing going to run on both 32 bit and 64 bit? Uh, versus yes. Windows? Okay. Yes. So you're running it in 32-bit, basically, so you can cover both sides, or do you specifically have a difference, a different build for 32 and 64? 
The front end actually runs in 32-bit, whether you're using 32 or 64-bit, but the Microsoft SQL Server actually will install the 64-bit SQL Server if you have a 64-bit operating right. system. And that's where really all, most of the work is happening is in the database, right. grabbing all the data. Right, but your software itself just talks to the SQL Server just like it would. It wouldn't really matter what, what, if it's 32 or 64-bit. That's up to the, to the operating system and the SQL install, I guess, right? Correct. Okay. And SQL actually, once you install the screener, when the screener starts up, it detects if SQL is installed, and if it's not, it downloads Microsoft SQL and runs the setup for you. That's so, nice. I mean, it's all pretty much uh, you will one click install. Oh, uh, stop, Bennett. We just covered that. Does it do Mac? You, it's a Windows only product. You'd have to run uh, your Mac with a virtual machine and have Windows installed in a virtual environment on your Mac or either use Boot Camp or, or something like, of that nature. Um, so it would uh it would not run on a Mac natively or parallels. Yeah. Yeah, and actually somebody posted information on some of the settings in the Mac. Um I think it's in the community forum. But there are a few settings on the Mac if you use a virtual machine that you had to change to map the control key. Mm -hmm. But those are in the forum and if you have any issues getting it going, just contact me and I can find that thread for you or get you up and running in that way. You know, one of the cool things, too, about having, you know, a, a very mature and very thought, well thought out product like this is not only that, it's, it's basically you're pretty much a one man operation. But the thing about it is you're accessible. So someone, you know, is if you guys have, have bought this from Michael and in the future or whatever, if you decide to purchase this, he's going to be there to help you and, and to add features and bend over backwards to, to get you going. Um, and to add things to his product, he wants to hear your feedback because it makes his product better. And uh, that 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 small intimate relationship between software developer and end customer, I think, is very special and is something that you won't get with the bigger products. Yeah, because I I actually uh, before I started this project, I asked I I use E Trade and I asked them if they'd add stochastics to their they had like a built-in kind of rule-based thing that helps you find trades mm -hmm. real time. I asked them to add stochastics to that, and I got the canned response, well, we'll evaluate that, and maybe it'll be included in a future version. And it has been over a year and a half now, and I have not seen any reply oh, on yeah, that. It's not it, available. Yeah, yeah. Just, just forget it. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. Thank and, you, RPM. Yeah, and um, and we'll do this again maybe uh, in a couple of months. Um, you know, if you got, is there anything that you'd like to tell us about that you've got planned uh, for the future releases? I I rely on the the traders and what they're looking for, so I'm always adding new indicators. I I probably added about uh, five to ten new indicators since we spoke last three months ago. Mm -hmm. So as 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 people request features, I add them. So and then the view assignment history up here on the right. Um, I added that to show what type of performance change since the time you put it in a list. It shows what the stock has done since then in a percentage. So if you were thinking about getting into a trade a week ago and you added it to one of your lists, you'll see what the gain or the loss would have been when you assigned it to your list. So that was like one of the features I added probably about a month ago. Mm -hmm. So there's constantly things. There's a couple more uh, questions there um, about back testing. Can you do some back testing? Um, Absolutely. Yep. The uh, the ratings, the analyst opinions, which I'm always wondering, you know, how well do they do a job of, uh, of of giving their opinions? I actually take the date of their opinion when it's issued, and you take your closing price, and it shows you what's happened since they've given their opinion on the stock. And uh, let me just find one that has a little, few more opinions here. Let me just clear this. I'll just go to the Apple. Everybody's always talking. All right, so this shows percentage changes since they've issued their opinions. And so you can see from, it's back testing their opinions. Yeah. And your assignment to your view, if you saw a stock and you were, you were thinking that, you know, you're going to do well in that trade, you can actually see what the, the percentage change is since the time you assigned it. So you got your own kind of back testing numbers in there from the time you thought you might take this trade to the current. So in, in that way, I've got back testing in there. And there's a question about how often can you import fresh data? Um, for the stock data or your gains and losses? I don't know. I think he's probably thinking about the, the stock data. 
That's daily. The right? stock. Yeah, it's daily at market close. The close numbers come in, plus all the other information from all the different sites. But you actually have this rapid fire ticker tape that's going on at the top, and you can configure that to go grab the data every so many minutes. So uh, if if you have items in one of your lists here, like you check off the list that you want to rapid fire ticker tape up there, and you can check off the upgrades and downgrades and insider trading. And you can set this to every five minutes, so it'll go grab the latest upgrades and downgrades and insider trading every five minutes for you. So if anything's come out since the last time you collected your data, it'll go grab that for you and have that available. Nice. All right, so I guess we're about wrapping it up here. Uh, cool. I want to thank you, man. And, uh, oh, really, no problem. Really excited, excited for you, and uh, looks like a great, a great product. And uh, just keep in touch, you know, if you got something new that you've, you've added, maybe in a couple months we'll have you on again. Absolutely. Thank you so much, RPM. Yep. All right. Take care, Michael. All right. Bye-bye. All, right, All right, everybody. So that was uh, Michael McDonald with Eye in the Sky Trade Planning Platform. And this has been a Trader Spotlight product showcase special. And, of course... I've been your host, RPM, on this Thursday, January 19th, 2012. It's right here around 10 o'clock. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up, and we'll see you guys on the other side in the chat room, and uh, see you guys tomorrow in the markets. Take care, everybody. RPM out.